Today is a very exciting clean with me because it involves a field trip to urgent care. <laughs> Sadly, that is not a lie. But before we get to that, today started like any other day, a mess. So let's get right into cleaning. I wasn't feeling 100%, so I wanted to start with something extremely simple. So I made my bed just so I could check something off my list. I don't make my bed every day, but I did today and I already feel slightly more motivated. Will I make my bed every day now? Probably not, but I'ma take this momentum today and keep going. I then figured as long as I was here, I should clear out all the cups on my bedside table, as well as clear the trash from it. You see the blue bottle of pills here? They are salt and electrolyte pills, and they remind me of a cautionary tale I need to share with you. Cautionary to mainly dumb people, because I don't think many of you would make the same mistake, but I'ma tell you anyways. But recently, I started working out again, and I have this bad habit or bad character trait, you could say, where I tend to do nothing or I go crazy and do the most. And on one rare day, I dragged myself to a workout and decided I'm here. I'm gonna have the best workout of my life. So the place I go to has these hot sauna boxes that you go into to work out. So I meandered into one of the sauna boxes and I cranked the heat to 140 degrees because that's how high they allowed it to go. I figured if they allow it to get that hot, it must be safe, right? Well, well, I did have the best workout ever and I went home and I felt an endorphin high, which I never get, but the high quickly turned into heat exhaustion and I started violently throwing up. Fortunately, my husband was home to keep an eye on me and gave me his salt and electrolyte pills along with water, nursed me back to health over the course of the day. But moral of the story, wait, what's the moral? Basically, don't be stupid and overwork yourself in 140 degree heat because you could get super sick or worse. But y'all already knew that. But I just thought of that story when I was editing this video because of those pills there. And I am noticing also here as I edit, the back of my hair looks awful. It reminds me of middle school days when girls would be straightening their hair and they would completely miss the back portion. So all the front would look good and straight and then the back would be all crazy and bed heady. And that is, I'm, I'm giving middle school vibes today and I'm not ashamed of it. Well, I'm a little ashamed of it, but I also find it very comical. Just threw my kids clothes in and we've been playing outside a ton lately, getting super sweaty in the hot Texas sun. So I'm adding baking soda to this load to help deodorize. Then to my closet to put away my clothes while they're still nice and warm. Raise your hand in the comments if you watched my first ever Con My Method video where I decluttered and organized my disaster closet. If you haven't, go back in time on my channel and watch it because my closet, it, it's gone through quite the trans transformation from then and I didn't have to spend a ton of money on it at all literally just bought new cube bins but if you want a drastic before and after watch that and then look at my closet now I got to give myself props I am proud of myself that I've been able to maintain a tidy enough closet two years later okay I realize I wear a ridiculous amount of leggings here and also admitting to myself that these are never going to fit me I recently bought these biker shorts from Target and they're way too small. They give me major camel toe. So donating these now rather than putting them back in my bin because I know I'm never gonna wear them again. But for me and my personality type, I think the key to maintaining what I consider a tidy closet is to not try to have it be perfect. If I told myself that everything had to be folded perfect, I would be overwhelmed by the task and my motivation would start to diminish till I had none. But knowing that I only have to fold or roll maybe half the items, then everything else that doesn't matter if it gets wrinkly just gets thrown in to their proper bin makes the task feel less daunting. And I know I got my shortcut that doesn't affect how I look when I leave the house, so I feel motivated to just get it done. Rolling up my millions of pairs of high-waisted mom pants, and then I'm going to store them upright in their dedicated cube bin that has sectioned off spaces that help keep everything in place. Last task in the closet before we move on is hanging up everything in their Roy G. Biv color order 
I like hanging all my tops grouped together by color. I used to have them grouped by style, like tank tops together, sweaters together, etc. But I found that since I have a lot less clothes than I used to, it's not a big deal to have things mixed up and I just like the way it looks to have the colors together. Now to address our main living area, there's just random stuff all over the place that doesn't belong on the floor. So first, I'm removing the pillowcases off of our throw pillows and putting those and the blankets in the laundry. Then it's just putting items that don't belong on the floor away in their proper homes. Next, wiping down the TV because my boys were shooting their little Nerf gun suction arrows at it and the suction cups were sticky and left a sticky mess on the TV. So those Nerf guns have since been confiscated and penalties divvied out to the guilty parties because we don't shoot the TV. Not in our budget to get a new one. This one needs to last till my kids graduate. Then I'm just wiping down the TV console. It's been a great while, so it's pretty dusty. And I'm also counting my blessings that my kids have never cracked a TV. Oh my God, why? Knock on wood, why did I even say that out loud? Whatever, counting my blessings cause my cousins who have five kids, they got a new flat screen and the kids were playing Wii on it and the competition must have gotten a little heated. One of the kids lost control of their remote and it shattered their new TV screen. So let's just hope that the lost Nerf guns teach my boys a lesson now so that something like that does not happen later. Taking out a bunch of Amazon boxes that I need to break down because today the recycling is getting picked up and I need to return this Oster convection oven to Costco. It is 100% the worst convection oven I've ever owned. Then three grown boys in this casa. I have a pile of shoes here that fit no one, so I'm donating them. Now for breaking down these boxes. Normally I just throw empty boxes in the garage and then my husband breaks them down, but he's out of town today. So I get to be man of the house. I couldn't find my slice tool or a box cutter right away. So I grabbed a pair of kitchen scissors and now I realize why this isn't my job. My husband knows me too well. Clearly I can't be trusted with sharp objects. Should have spent the two seconds looking for a box cutter. So I'm gonna get one now after I bandage up my hand that I just sliced open. I won't show you the cut, but it's not great. All right, so lesson learned. I have to go to the doctor because I'm probably going to need stitches on my stupid little wound on my finger. It just won't stop bleeding. Like it doesn't look that bad until I take the pressure off and it just like spurts open. It won't close, it won't stop bleeding. Sorry if this is TMI, but um, moral of the story, just get a freaking box cutter or one of the slice tools. Don't use an open scissor. Probably obvious to most of you, was obvious to me too. I just thought I was coordinated enough to get away with not using a box cutter today. And I'm not. Here I am at the local urgent care. I really tried not to come, but it wouldn't stop bleeding for over an hour. And with my husband out of town and no family nearby, I'm solo with the three kids. So figured it was better to get it handled right away and look like a fool if it's not a big deal versus after I get my kids from summer camp, if it were to get worse or not stop by then, then I need to drag three kids five and under with me. Okay, update, I am alive. I got my tetanus shot to make sure that I continue to stay alive. Um, they treated my little wound that it's so embarrassing. I. I really, really tried to avoid coming here. I sat at home trying to get it to stop bleeding for over an hour. It wouldn't stop bleeding. And of course, as I'm driving over here, by the time they call me in to do my appointment, it, it stops bleeding. And they're looking at me like I'm a complete idiot going into the urgent care to treat a paper cut because that's essentially what it looked like once it stopped bleeding. But you know, they, they humored me. They put this glue on my finger and I don't know, put some sort of band-aid basically on it. So I didn't just spend a whole bunch of money for nothing. They at least put the band-aid on. And then of course, I do think it was worth coming here because I do know it was a pretty deep cut. Um, and I know I was past due on getting a tetanus shot. So I got my tetanus booster and I don't need to get another one for another 10 years. And at this point, I'm extremely hungry. It's almost 2.45 right now. I have not eaten lunch yet. I, I haven't eaten anything today yet. And yeah, being hungry didn't really hit me till now, now that I am out in the real world and I am still kicking. <laughs>
So yeah, what do I want to eat? I feel like when you give blood, they give you all kinds of candy and sugar and juices and treats to, I don't, I don't know. So you don't pass out. And I just lost some blood. <laughs> I don't think as much as when you give blood, but I'm going to use it as an excuse to go get myself a sugary treat. And sugary treat I did get. I went to Small Cakes, which is a cup, really overpriced cupcake place, but they have amazing cupcakes. So I got myself two, one for now and one for later in case I feel faint. I don't know how I'm supposed to eat this. My son showed me this though. You break off the bottom of your cupcake and you make a cupcake sandwich and still too large for me to eat, but might make it a little bit easier and less messy to eat. Mmm, that's so good. All right, I just got home and unfortunately the recycling dude has already come through and picked up all the recycling. Obviously I did not finish breaking down all of my packages and putting it in the bin to bring out. So we'll just have an excess amount for him to pick up a week from today, but I still need to get it out of my garage. So we're going to break it down. It was not traumatic enough to prevent me from doing that. I'm still going to get that done today. And then we got a lot of other stuff to still get done. I learned my lesson and I got my slice tool. I'll have it linked below. If you're classy like me, you pretty much can't hurt yourself with it unless you're really trying. I don't even trust myself with a box cutter at this point. Slice tool is all I will use going forward. The box I'm breaking down now is my new Ninja Foodi 10 in 1 convection oven. I love it so much. I owned one for a year and a half and it's a lifesaver if you have a bad habit of prepping dinner at the final hour because it heats up in 60 seconds. I was annoyed that it broke after only a year and a half though, so I tried a different toaster oven, which you saw before, and I hated it. I don't care if the one I didn't like lasted for 10 years, I didn't wanna have to use it for 10 years, because this Ninja is just too capable and convenient, so I repurchased. Now to the circle of kitchen life, always cooking and cleaning. And by the time you're done cleaning, it feels like you gotta cook something again cause it's almost the next meal. Hence why I needed to cut the crap oven out of my kitchen and just go back to the good old tried and true Ninja Foodi. As you can see, I have placed a nice little glove on my injured hand to protect it from all the nasty bacteria around my kitchen. I don't want my bandage getting dirty dish water on it. I also wanted to give an update on the new Scrub Daddy wand that I tried for the first time in my last cleaning video about two weeks ago. The update is not the best. I still feel like I gotta use it just to get good use out of it since I spent good money on it. But honestly, I prefer my little OXO or OXO, I don't know how you pronounce it, soap filled hand scrub brush that I've used in the past. So I wouldn't recommend the new Scrub Daddy wand, but as long as I bought it, I'm gonna use it for a bit. Maybe that's stupid. Maybe I should just toss it, but I just feel guilty getting rid of it after I spent, I think after shipping and handling, it was almost $20 on it, not worth it. Next, I'm going to clear the table and give it a good wipe down with my multi-purpose Blue Land cleaner. And a ruggable update for y'all, I have expressed my dissatisfaction with my ruggable under my kitchen table in the last few videos, cause after maybe 10-ish washes, it's not holding up, but I need a rug under my table that's easy to clean. Otherwise, this table slips all over my fake wood floors and scratches it. So a few of y'all recommended that I get non-slip furniture pads to put under my table in lieu of having a rug so that it doesn't slip around and then I can get rid of the rug completely. It'll be easier to clean and maintain the space. So I ordered it and I'm going to try and see how it works out in a future video. I'm still waiting waiting for the shipping. I do think it will be so much easier to maintain the space without having to clean any sort of rug. I just really don't want the table shifting on my floor, scratching it all up. So hoping these non-slip pads work. Thank you all always for your suggestions in the comments. My home has improved so much in large part to your suggestions. So truly, thank you. Cleaning off my stovetop right now with disposable antibacterial wipes. I don't normally use disposable wipes for my cleaning, but we're in speed clean mode right now since I wasted two to three-ish hours of my free time driving to and from and waiting in line at urgent care. So disposable wipes for the win right now. I'm just using them all over.
to my pantry. First, I am going to take out the recycling. It fills up so fast because there's excessive packaging on pretty much everything nowadays. Then I'm going to organize and restock the snack bins. As I do this, I like to take inventory of what we have and don't have because I have been meal planning the last couple weeks consistently and trying to figure out the best method of what works for me. And so far, that is organizing and taking inventory once a week, then planning out meals using as much of what we have as possible and buying groceries just to fill in the holes. And so far, so good too. I know we're saving a ton of money because we're not getting takeout nearly as often. Weekends are still a free for all though because I am human, but we are making a lot more at home and wasting a lot less food. If you've been doing meal planning for a while, please let me know in the comments below any tips or tricks you have. I am still very new to this. I only just recently got the hang of and learned how to cook. I did a sponsorship from HelloFresh and Every Plate, which is owned by HelloFresh not that long ago, maybe a few months ago. And I really didn't know how to cook. And those meal kits were very helpful for me because they actually taught me the basic bare bones lessons on how to cook. So I'm able to extrapolate from that and cook so much more now. And here's the completed pantry. I love the way it looks right after a restock. I know it's gonna get destroyed after maybe a day or two, but it looks so nice right now. Back to doing the laundry. I'm going to pull out my boys' clothes and put those away. And then when I was transferring the stuff from the washer into the dryer, it stunk. I might have to rewash what is being dried right now, but for now I am washing the washer with two cups of baking soda and putting it on tub clean cycle because it stinks. Now for putting away my boys' clothes. 411 for newbies here. So glad you're here. If you couldn't tell yet, I'm not perfect and I'm not trying to be. Just trying to survive and I take shortcuts where I can. And one of those shortcuts is I don't fold clothes that don't need to be folded which includes my boys clothes because my preschoolers don't care their clothes just go in the proper bin so that they can get themselves dressed in the morning and we are all happy i accidentally mixed up a whole bunch of my husband's clothes in with the kids clothes normally i strictly wash all the kids clothes since they all wear the same size together separate so that i don't have to do any separating when it comes to washing or putting away but yeah i somehow got a whole bunch of my husband's stuff mixed up in here so that is not the way it's supposed to be also i finally got my boys summer swimsuits and they all are wearing matching swimsuits i know i talked about it Ugh, i'm like sweating right now should not have just dabbed my sweat on clean clothes anyways i bought my boys brand new swimsuits for this summer the shorts unfortunately have faded they used to be the same bright neon yellowish green color as these so i'm pretty disappointed that these faded because the reason I picked out these specific swimsuits I talked about in a previous video. Not to get morbid, but if for whatever reason your kid ends up in a troublesome situation at a pool, if they're wearing a blue swimsuit, it's not easy to see at the bottom of the pool versus a very bright color like this or a bright pink, bright red, coral, whatever. That sticks out if it's hanging out at the bottom of a pool, which is definitely what you want if you're going to pools or parks this summer. These are the swimsuits I got for all my boys. I also like for all my three boys to wear the exact same swimsuit because then it's very easy for me to spot my boys when we're out in public when they're all wearing neon matching suits. But yeah, it looks like unfortunately this is I think the second or third time I've washed their swim shorts. They have faded quite significantly. So still really happy with the swim shirts. They are by the brand Cat and Jack. But anyways, if you're looking for bright neon swimsuits I got mine at Target just unfortunately the shorts do fade but I still like them and I still like that my boys really stand out when we're out at the splash pad or pool normally I right side out all their clothing because a lot of it is in 
inside out. And because of the holdup we had earlier today, I just, I don't have time to right side everything out. I, I really got to hurry because I got to go get my kids very soon. Did not get as much done today as I wanted, but you know what? I'm just going to be glad that I didn't completely cut off my finger and that I am still accomplishing something despite having a severe delay in the day. You gotta just count the wins, count the wins. It's what I always try to do. It's so easy to look at what you're missing out on or what you're not doing, but really us moms are doing a ton. So let's just focus on what we are accomplishing because if you really look at all the things you accomplish in a day and you don't even think about what you wish you had done or whatever, doesn't matter. When you look at what you did accomplish in a day, it is a lot. All right, short on time and priorities he can put some of his stuff away later. Next, our front dining room area, AKA the Amazon package loading zone needs to be tidied. My husband, y'all, has the worst habit of buying me gag gifts just randomly, way too much. And I mean, I don't wanna sound like I'm complaining because I should be thankful that he's just randomly thinking about me throughout the day in his life and is always getting me little gifts, but what am I supposed to do with a life-size cutout of Dwight Schrute? Look at this, this is a true life-size cutout of good old Dwight. So yes, I am thankful that I have a husband who just randomly thinks of me and buys me gifts, but like now I have to figure out what to do with a life-size Dwight Schrute. I already had a kind conversation with him that I super appreciate that he thinks about me throughout the day, but I am trying to live a less cluttered life and constantly getting me gag gifts just becomes clutter. <laughs> a life-size Dwight Schrute cutout is just not something I'm going to get good use out of in my life. So now I have to figure out who to gag gift this to. I'll save this in my present closet. Boxes, more boxes to break down. This is heavy. Here we got a whole bunch of popcorn. Do not use blades to open. Well, how am I supposed to open it? I mean, this is a tiny blade, so I should be fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh my gosh, my husband got so much popcorn. All right, this is our little panic dry goods storage area here. Just, just in case, you never know. We have a whole bunch of rice down here. We have a variety of quinoa. Um, some some protein powder. Obviously, my husband wanted to prep and make sure he had tons of popcorn. We get this organic heirloom multicolored popcorn seeds that we use in our air popper. It's so good and so healthy compared to regular microwave popcorn. There's so much of this. I, I don't know how this is gonna fit. I'm gonna try to make it fit. Ugh. But yeah, this is just kind of our little healthy-ish, dry, good food panic storage area. To make sure, you know, if prices start getting crazy or there are food shortages, you just never know. We're prepared at least to open our own movie theater if need be. It's taking up half of the storage. All right, this is not the end of the video. I just have Baby Shark doing the vacuuming for me because the floor is clearly disgustingly dirty. But I gotta go get my kids. So the other tasks that I have to accomplish today, I gotta do after they go to bed tonight. Alrighty, it's been a few hours, so completing the laundry that never got done now that the washer doesn't stink, my boys thought my little battle wound was cool. They were impressed because they complain over the tiniest of injuries that don't even leave a mark. So it made me feel like less of a weenie for going to urgent care, knowing how impressive it looked to them. And after I get the load swapped out, I'm going to do some decluttering and organizing in this washroom. All right, I cannot put those clothes that I just took out of the dryer away because I don't want to wake anyone up, but I want to declutter my cleaning area over here because there's a lot of items, a lot of items. Clearly, I'm not gonna pull everything out or anything like that, but I definitely am going to look high level at items I have not used in a long time and get rid of things that need to be gotten rid of because they're not getting used. Starting with the Vibroom. I showed this to y'all in a video, gosh, probably 
six months ago now this thing is broken already in under six months this thing is already broken so i'm definitely tossing this and truly wouldn't only not recommend because it broke so quickly but also because i found that after the novelty of this wore off which it did wear off fairly quickly. It was so much easier to just use my stick back when cleaning up around the kitchen. So this barely got any use anyways to begin with. And even with very light use, it broke in less than six months. So it's going away. Sorry about the noise from the washing machine. It just is what it is. This is the next thing that I'm getting rid of. My Bissell spin wave. Yeah, my Bissell cordless spin wave. I did really like this for a great while, but you can see based on all the dust that has accumulated on this, I just really don't use it anymore. I pretty much exclusively use my O Cedar spin mop with this bucket, which has essentially rendered my Bissell spin wave useless. So if I had to choose and recommend one, it would be this O Cedar spin mop all the way. It's not as techy and cool, but I feel like it just does a better job cleaning, which means I never use this. So even though I feel bad getting rid of it, it's time to retire this and donate it to someone who would use it. Also mentioning for mopping, I use my Swiffer wets as well. Basically for quick cleans, I use my Swiffer wets and for more extreme cleaning, I pull out my O Cedar spin mop. And now I'm organizing my cleaning tools here, putting everything back in its proper home and vacuuming the floor. Now that we have the easy part done, which was decluttering and cleaning the floor, we're moving to the big wire rack full of crap. Okay, since I hurt my finger, I was planning on doing some bathroom cleaning, but I'm trying to avoid heavy chemicals since I have a pretty deep cut on my hand. But this is something I got. I saw it on TikTok. I wanted to test it out to see if it works. So future clean with me or cleaning hacks video, I'm going to be testing this TikTok find out on the grout of my shower and bathtubs to see how well it works. Also, I feel like I've shared this on my TikTok before, but just FYI, I bought both of them to test them out. The Sham Wow from those infamous infomercials against the Handy Shammy that you can get for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. And they really are virtually the same thing. I mean, the Sham Wow is maybe a step up like 5% nicer, but for the huge savings, the Handy Shammy works just fine, is basically a dupe. I also recently bought these. I Every time Scrub Daddy comes out with new products, I gotta try them out. Obviously, have not tried these out, but I'm gonna put them in my cleaning rag area so that they can be entered into the rotation. I'm sticking them right on top here so I don't forget to use them. All right, I just busted my finger again because I'm right-handed and I'm always using this freaking hand. I think this is a sign that I should be done for the day. I don't want to re-injure myself and embarrass myself at urgent care once again. So this is the end of the video. I gotta take care of myself. I wanna keep this finger. But thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it and want some more cleaning motivation, there will be some other cleaning playlists floating over the screen and I will see you in the next video. Bye.